Uh, good, good to see you. This is Eric. Um, yeah, how are you, Eric? Uh, great. Listen, you know, I'm, I'm curious about what you think is going to uh, face you and, and your colleagues in the industry. Uh, there's a lot of talk in Washington about that next shoe to fall. The CMBS market is not back. All these loans that are turning over uh, in the real estate space. What, what, how do you see it happening? What are going to happen to values when the, some of these loans come through and there's not any liquidity, or is there enough liquidity to deal with it? Well, there's definitely not enough liquidity to deal with it, uh, but the banks are actually, uh, you know, when they can, kicking the can down the road. Uh, 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 the uh, CMBS market is facing something in the neighborhood of $800 billion worth of loans. I think between now and 2014, and there's been no system in, put in place to replace that source of financing. Uh, TALF notwithstanding, it, which that hasn't been a too much of a robust platform to date. Uh, one thing that they're doing, uh, the regulators have just announced that they're going to do, is that they're going to divide the uh, real estate loans into good pieces and bad pieces. Will allow, which will allow the existing institutions to kind of play with the borrowers for a little bit longer, uh, you know, maybe build the balance sheet up in the financial institution so that when the write-off is taken that there's a little more strength in the financial institution. But the underwriting standards and some of the loans that people have made, uh, you know, are, were really outrageous. Hey Richard, um, we got mortgage bankers gave us weekly purchasers today, purchases, and they're down 11.7 which is the lowest since December of 2000, and they're blaming it on uncertainty about the extension of that home buyer's tax credit. Was that really that big of a factor in, in purchase decisions? And now that it's been expanded, does that mean good things for housing in the next uh, six, seven months? Well, I think there are some good things coming up for housing, that extension being one of them. Uh, the other thing is that uh, as we've been going through this process a little bit, uh, our home starts have shrunk dramatically, and our inventories are starting to shrink as well, and eventually there'll be some equilibrium in supply and demand. And we know that at the very bottom end of the market, where the foreclosures are happening and where the buyers have the ability to get some help from the government with the home buyer credit, that there's been a pretty robust market of sales there. But, you know, uh, uh, if you're waiting for a, a cash for clunkers and you know that that's, you're going to get that opportunity, why buy a house until you know it's going to be, uh, uh, you know, get that home buyer credit? Yeah. So fair to say you are far more optimistic about residential than you are commercial. Right? I'm much that's more optimistic about the residential uh, side than the commercial side. And the reason is that we have demand drivers called population growth and nas nat natural household formation. And, uh, you know, the, what's the expression, you know, when a young person gets out of uh, school and finally does get the job, the first thing they want to do is leave the house and get away from mom and dad. Yeah, well, I think we got to go, Richard. But, you know, we have a lot of people just talk about the, the Fed's buying of all these mortgage uh, securities that has kept rates low. Mm -hmm. Is that been, I mean, I guess it was necessary, but is it ever good to try to game the system like that? Well, if you want to know what our housing, underlying housing policy is, really, it's to keep interest rates low. I, I mean, know. If, well, you cut low. Through, if you cut through everything, that's what it's all about. Well, but that seems to dislocate things. And, I mean, we, you know, there was a way that we tried to get home ownership up to 70 percent. And, you know, a lot of people blame the greedy bankers. A lot of people blame Fannie and Freddie and the politicians that enabled Fannie and Freddie. A lot of people blame Greenspan for keeping rates at 1 percent. There's a lot of reasons for the housing bubble. Is that how we should answer it, by, by setting rates artificially low again? Uh, probably not. But uh, I think, you know, given the state of the economy, I mean, they're doing anything they can to try to get some uh, health back. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily fault them for that. Yeah. Uh, you know, again, uh, you know, if you look at everybody's household uh, net worth, that house is an important part of it. And uh, destroying that house value does have uh, big implications what, for everybody. What about the 3.5% FHA down payments? The people don't have any skin in the game again. And their house could be upside down, and they only got 3% in. And it's, it's just going to 3 and a half, It's going to happen. If values I'm, fall. If yeah, values I, fall, it's going to happen with all you, over again. Joe, I'm with you on that one. I think we've got to go back to more conventional underwriting standards. You know, 20% down for the house. Maybe there are instances when you can modify that. But, you know, those fundamental standards should not have changed.
We Con have. Go ahead. I was going to say to Congressman, it, it, this points to like every debate we have is about the degree to which you keep inflating the the rapidly deflating bubble, right. um, or do you take your pain now? Which it, is it is all about the tolerance for pain right yeah. now. And you know, the, as Richard, as we get closer to the next election year. Uh, in November 2010, people are going to want to see jobs, they want to see economy, want to see their confidence lifted. This is what's driving some of this policy. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't agree with you more, Congressman. We, we have to get jobs back as the number one uh, priority, All get right. people working. Bill Rudin, thank you. No, wait a minute. Steve I, Ross, hey, uh, hey. No, who, are, who are you? Oh, you're LaFrac. Okay. I lighten I up, buddy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what were you going to say? And I was going to say, I'll see you guys in about a month. <laughs> All right.